Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth and the last part of uh, lesson seven. Uh, we will be looking at solving absolute value problems in this video. So, so you might remember we had quickly done a review of absolute values earlier. Where absolute values are just you have a number uh, and it has these bars outside the number. So you have negative four bar, and this is read as absolute value of negative four. So this just means that whatever number is in there, whether it's positive or negative, once you put an absolute value bars around it, it means it is always equal to positive number. Okay, so negative number becomes positive. If you had a positive number to begin with, then it will just stay as a positive number. Okay, so these are the absolute value bars. Okay. Now, one way to represent this is that, uh, let's say we have an absolute value of a variable x. Now, I want to, re to represent this, what this might equal to, okay, in terms of x. So, there are two possibilities that we see over here. If x is positive, okay, like 4 here was positive, then the absolute value would just give me a positive number. So, if, if this x is positive, let me write over here, if the x is positive, and I can write it by this equation, right, that x is greater than 0. If x is greater than 0, then absolute value of x is just equal to x, just like in the example over, over here, 4, absolute value of 4 is equal to 4. Now, in the case that absolute value, in the case that x is negative, so x being less than 0, if that's the case, what happens is that the negative number becomes positive. So one way I can represent that is by just putting negative x as the value of absolute value of x. Okay, so these are the two scenarios when you have absolute values. Either your absolute value of x is just equal to x if x is positive, or it's equal to negative of the x if x is less than zero. So this is very important. This will come very handy, this concept, when you're doing a GRE problem with absolute values. So here is a problem that we can attempt. It's a quantitative comparison question at the top, we have this equality given that absolute of 1 minus 5 is equal to absolute of 5 minus m, okay? And quantity A, we have A, actually, uh, this one, this m should be an A. Sorry for the typo. And quantity B has a 12, okay? So let's take this equation. 1 minus 5 equals 5 minus A, okay? So let's solve the left side, which is pretty straightforward. I have a negative 4, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, negative 4 will give me a positive 4 when it comes out of the absolute value bars. So here is my equation, a bit simplified. All right. Now, just like in the above definition of absolute value that we get, that mod of x, absolute value of x can be x or negative x. Okay. We'll use the same concept here and we'll say that 5 minus a, absolute value of 5 minus a, could equal 5 minus a. So here we are assuming that 5 minus a is a positive value. Because if it's a positive, then when we take out the absolute value, it's still the same thing. But we don't know for sure, right? So the other option is that 5 minus a might be negative. So I just put a negative outside. So this is how you break an absolute value problem into two separate equations. Okay, one equation is same without the absolute value, absolute, absolute bars. The other one is the same, but you put a negative in front. Okay, to account for the fact that your value inside the absolute value, absolute bars might be negative. Okay, now you just solve your equation as you solve anything else. You here get a equals one. Here, let's distribute out the negative signs. I'll have negative five. And negative here with negative here will give me a positive a, and this will give me a equals 9. Okay, so there are two possible values of a a could be 9 or a could be 1. Okay, now coming back to the question, I'm comparing a with 12. So, in both cases of a value, uh, quantity b, which is 12, would be bigger. Okay, so the correct answer here is b. Okay, simple enough. Uh, the trick here is to divide your absolute value equation into two separate equations. Okay, one is same, the other one has a negative sign, just like over here. Okay, 